Thank you for tuning in to TTV. I'm your host, Toya, and today is Wisdom Wednesday. And so what I've been doing on these Wednesdays is going over a book called The Tao Te Ching. And what it is, is it's a collection of proverbs or wise sayings um, of old Chinese men. That's basically what it means. Um, this is the version that I use. And it's um, stuff that was believed to be written by uh, Leo, Leo Taz, T Leo, T I know I'm not pronouncing this right, but it's L-A-O and then T-Z-U, which is basically old wise Chinese men, <laughs> basically. Um, these have been around for a long time, like since 2500 B.C. Um, or B.C.E., whatever the acronyms are now, I know they change, like, I grew up with BC and then somewhere along the lines it changed to BCE I think but um so it's almost 5,000 years old it's is they're they're pretty old and what is fascinating to me and why I present it to you guys is because it's still like the information and the knowledge that is given that wisdom that's put in here is still relevant for our lives today you know, 5,000 years later, it's still relevant, <laughs> the information that they provide. And so today we are on verse 20, which is the sadness of superficialities and of the unfulfilled great integrity. Now, again, these are proverbs for wisdom. So it's not like going through the Bible or the Quran or any other um, religious text. This is just information that was provided like to make people wiser and to open their eyes to the things in their lives, you know, and how we separate ourselves from the great integrity, which is whatever you call it. Okay, so it can be God, Source, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, whatever name you give that. That is what the great integrity is, okay? And that's what they mean by the great integrity. So the, 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 the proverbs and the stories that they put in here, this information is to get you closer to God, but not in a religious sense. It's more in a self-awareness, like how you fit in this world in relations to other people. And so that's what the Tao Te Chain is and why I am going through this and why I'm presenting it to you guys because let's face it, we all can use a little more wisdom them in our life you know um, I'm sure we all have made decisions that we weren't happy about <laughs> but we did it we learned our lessons from it you know so but sometimes it's good to figure out and find out why those lessons were relevant why did we put ourselves in that position to begin with and sometimes it can just be something as simple as a separation from who we are and who we are in relation to God or again whatever name you give it so for the purposes of this i'm gonna say the great integrity <laughs> because that's really what that that name means and what it what is referencing referencing so let's get into it because this one is a long one so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna read through it um and then go back through and give my interpretation of it and like always i always encourage you guys to give me what you think about it or what you got out of it and leave it in the comments below so let's get started. So the sadness of superficialities and of the unfulfilled great integrity. It is sometimes deeply depressing to be a rebel, knowing that we can never share most, most people's way of life, nor can they share ours. Schooling stuff stuffs the brain of our children with trivia. The more trivia, the more their anxieties. The introduction. Intra Induction, <laughs> sorry y'all. Um, they indoctrinate the children to believe that consequences are grave when they f fail to distinguish good from evil and agreement from disagreement. What gross nonsense. To escape the rubbish of all this so-called knowledge in the winter people run from the great feast of the lamb, pork, and ox, and they climb high in the mountains to view the first signs of spring. We are so different, having no desire for the trivialities nor for their compensations we are like infants not yet knowing how to laugh ever wandering and having no home to which we may return while most people are obese with superficialities we feel empty while most people feel they know so much we feel simple-minded while most people believe they live happily in the best of all possible worlds we are despaired we are despaired to witness this world 
it is so painful to know that we are always be we will always be outsiders endlessly moving through the ocean aimlessly blowing like the wind while the fear while we fear what others fear we don't treasure what others treasure our treasure is the great integrity however until it is shared it will not be the universal integrity for we are part of them and they are part of us Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> Cause it's a lot in here. It's 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 a lot in this one. Well, let's get started. Like I said, this is my interpretation of it, or what I got out of it. Um, and let me know what you think and what you get out of it. Because sometimes when you read something, you get something one time, and then you can come back months later after you had different experiences and read it again and get something else out of it. But from what I get from this initial reading, because again, this is the first time I'm reading this, it's a lot in here. It, it's it's a lot in here and it, it goes back to what I'm saying about the things that even though this was almost 5,000 years ago it still applies today still applies so let's get into it so it's sometimes deeply depressing to be a rebel knowing that we can never share most people's way of life nor can they share ours so as much as a lot of us including myself would love to believe that we don't need other people and don't need to be around other people or be accepted or anything like that we do <laughs> we do <laughs> it's just something innate in us and it might go back to the whole survival thing because in order to survive you know you your chances were better when you were with a group than it was when you were just by yourself so we need other people so to be able to live like other people or for people to understand your way of life or for you to understand theirs and actually have some kind of communion with it you know give and take it's important to us it makes us feel accepted it makes us feel included and again we need that as human beings so when you are a rebel, you're doing things that most people would shy away from. You're doing things that people would be afraid to do, you know, because um, to be on the outside, to be the outsider, it, it's, it's difficult. It, it is. It, when you're not like everybody else, you don't think like everybody else, you don't do what everybody else does, it's difficult. And so that's what this, I believe, is talking about. To be different means to separate yourself from everybody else, the norm that everybody else has. So you can't participate in their norm. They can't participate in yours. And so there's always that distance. There's always that gap in between. Um, schooling stuffs the brain of our children with trivia. And the more trivia, the more their, anxi their um, anxieties. They indoctrinate the children to believe that consequences are grave when they fail to distinguish good from evil and agreement from disagreement. What gross nonsense. So if you think about it, <laughs> just think about your own self. When you were in school, you learned a whole lot of stuff, okay? Now, I will say some of the stuff that we learned in as children did help because I'm 45, I'll be 46 years this 46 years old this year. So a lot of stuff that we learned as kids growing up, yes, there were some benefits to it. Um, geometry, for example, I've only used it as far as my knowledge. <laughs> I've only used it in um, shooting pool, and even that I didn't do too good with it. But we have the knowledge of mathematics, we have the knowledge of science, we have the knowledge of um, of what was I about to say? The knowledge of science, the knowledge of math, the knowledge of English, the knowledge of history. Okay, so we learn all of this. Those are your basics. And then the knowledge of your body, your physical health. And there's some importance of it, but a lot of it is, like you said, it's just trivia. It's just trivia. We just memorize it long enough to pass the test. And then once the test is passed, we don't even remember it. We don't retain it. We just retain it long enough to get that good grade because if we don't get the good grades, then we'll fail in life. And that's what I think they're saying in this is that, you know, you you use this knowledge and it makes the kids so anxious because they got to get these good grades. Otherwise, they're going to end up being some homeless person on the street or living in their parents' house for the rest of their life. Right. That's that's really what you think. Um, and and that is supposed to be what's good. And it gives the anxiety. Now, take it a little deeper, part of the anxiety may come from the fact that it's not something that you need to know or something that is important on your spiritual level, like with you yourself. 
if you're thinking about it with in connection to God or Yahweh, great integrity, whatever you call it, if you think about it in relations with that, the information we have is trivial. You know, you don't actually need to have it. And I think that may be sometimes where that anxiety comes from is you going against who you truly are, going against the nature of who you are. Um, so that's what I got out of that verse. Um, to escape the rubbish of all this so-called knowledge in the winter people run to the great feast of lamb pork and ox and they climb the high mountains to view the first signs of spring so I, I, hmm. <laughs> this one kind of stumps me I ain't gonna lie but this one um, to escape the rubbish of all this so-called knowledge To escape the rubbish. Okay, so to escape from, to as an escape, just we just gonna leave it at that. To escape, we throw these feasts, we have these dinners, these parties where we like can't wait for it to get warmer so we can go out and do things. Like all of that takes place in the, in order for us to escape this world that we're caught in. You know where you have to learn, you have to do your job, you have to do all of these things. So to escape that, we this is what we do. We party, we have feasts, we look and waiting on spring to come, and so we can start, you know, getting putting the work in and everything else. But really, it's all rubbish because at the end of the day, if you were connected to the great integrity or to God or Yahweh, whatever you call it, if you're connected to that, then you it's it's a knowledge that comes with that. It's a knowing that comes with that. I should say. Because when you are connected in that manner, sometimes you just know stuff. Sometimes that information just instinctively comes. Like if you think about it with animals, for example, um, a bear doesn't have to be told to be a bear. Yes, the mother will raise it. Yes, the mother will show it. But even if you took that mother out, the bear will still find its way. Even if for some reason the mother died, the bear will still find its way. And the reason is, is because they are in tune and connect in the connection with the great integrity, God, Yahweh, whatever you want to call it. They're in tune with it. So it's instinctual for them. They're not sitting there thinking like, well, let me go to the library and take out a book on this so I can figure it out. Because they have that connection, they already know what to do. And I think that's what this is talking about. We, we feel like we have to escape the knowledge when really, if you were connected, you would have the knowledge. Okay. Even with me and the work I'm doing right now, I told y'all, I don't come up with these topics. <laughs> these topics come to me, okay? When I do the topics on here, they come to me. And that's because I am connected to my ancestors. I'm connected to my spirit guides. I'm connected to God, you know, in that sense to where though that they send those messages and that's what I end up sharing with you guys. So, and it's not, and I'm not trying to say it in a manner to where I'm better than you or better than anybody else. These are things I think anybody can do. I just think that we've separated ourselves for so long and we put our belief system in the hands of somebody else instead of taking control of it, our own selves and being responsible for our own selves that we end up, it ends up being just as unhealthy <laughs> as the foods we eat and what we do with our body. So anybody can get closer to their and to their ancestors and have that connection anybody can have that connection with their spirit guys anybody can have that connection with god you don't have you don't need a third party in which to do it and when you do get that connection even if it's not as loud or as as clear as the way i'm speaking to you now you sometimes it comes in different manners it can be a video that pops up on your youtube and you just get this very strong overwhelming feeling to watch it and when you watch it be like ah i was trying to figure that out and there it is or to pick up this book or to watch a video on ttv <laughs> so it comes to you in those manners and you're more open to receive it and that's how you get your knowledge so and i think that's what this this verse is talking about you know when you separate yourselves from it it's very hard to get connected and get that information so you want to escape um we are so different, having no desire for the trivialities, nor for the compensations. We are like infants, not yet knowing how to laugh, ever wandering, and having no home to which we may return. Again, with that separation, you're like a baby. You don't know because you, you the guys and the and the the being the uh, <laughs> the connection that is to teach you and guide you, you're separated from. 
And because you're separated from, you're wandering around like a little baby trying to learn on your own. So while most people are obsessed with superficialities, we feel empty. While most people feel they know so much, we feel simple-minded. Um, while most people believe they are, they live happily in the best of all possible worlds, we desire to witness this world. It is so painful to know that we are always, we will always be outsiders, endlessly moving like the ocean, aimlessly blowing like the wind. And that just goes back, you know, because of that separation, we feel empty. We, we feel like we're not connected to anything. We feel like we're just out here just wandering around aimlessly, like just no goals no destinations and i think that's why there's so many programs out there to try to help people find what is your purpose what is the why in your life because that's what we're really trying to do and when truthfully all you really need to do is connect to god connect to your ancestors connect to your spirit guides to figure out what what your purpose here is to figure out what it is that you're supposed to be doing and once you figure that out they guide you and when you feel guided you get that knowledge you feel like it's some purpose like you have your footsteps aren't just going anywhere that they're going down a certain destination and so that's what this is talking about you know when you're disconnected you just wander around aimlessly you have no real purpose or you don't know what your purpose is. We all have purpose. You just don't know what it is. And so you're searching for it, but not knowing how to search for it because we're all disconnected. Um, so while we fear what others fear, we don't treasure what others treasure. Our treasure is the great integrity. However, until it is shared, it will not be the universal integrity for we are part of them and they are part of us. So that just goes back to everybody being connected. Um, we are all connected. We all come from the same energy source because we are walking energy beings and our energy source comes from the same, regardless of what name you give it, whether it's Yahweh, Jehovah, God, integrity, universe, whatever, it's all the same. It's all the same energy source. And so because we all come from that, we are all connected. So even though we have different missions or different purposes or for being here, you know, we are all here. So that's why what I like, you might not like what you like. I might not like what you're doing. I might not be doing <laughs> and vice versa. And I think that's what this is talking about. But we still share that same energy. And because we share that same energy in the end, we're all here for the same reasons. Um, so that's my take on it. Again, that was the Tao Te Ching. Uh, we're on verse 20. And I know when I say that, it sounds like I'm speaking in the Bible book and giving you a Bible verse, but that's not what it is. It's, it's different from religion. It's, it's more so your spiritual connections um, to the source, the energy source in which we all come from. Spirit, Yahweh, source, integrity, whatever name you give it. We all come from that. And that's what that book is about. So I love you guys. Again, if you got anything out of it, please like, subscribe, and share. I know this was a longer video, but it was also a longer verse, and it had a lot of gems in it. So I hope you enjoyed them. I love you guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow. <music>